January 24th. All my taps are out. I hope everybody else has tapped their trees. I'm going to call this meeting to order. First order of business is to salute the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You need to catch your breath. Everybody <coughs> needs to start working out. I do. I do. Okay, the first order of business is a public hearing. Town of Tuftonboro public hearing notice was posted. It's pursuant to RSA 31 colon 95 dash E. The, public, the selectman will hold a public hearing to accept a donation from the Tuftonboro Firefighters Association of a home Homatro. Is that what Yes, Homatro. Incline cutter and combi tools. The retail value being $32,710 after trade in. So you're trading in something the town owns? Yes. Okay. For use by the Tuftonboro Fire Department, the hearing will take place today, Monday, February 24th at 9 a.m. at these offices at 240 Road Center, Tuftonboro. Okay. Good morning. Um, so it's two tools? It's uh, it's actually three tools. Three tools. There'll be two of these and one of these. This is the incline cutter. This is the combi tool. Okay. They're all battery operated. Um, you have a Sorry. informational sheet in front of you. There's no additional uh, maintenance or insurance uh, for the units. The maintenance on the current uh, donated combi tool for that's on engine one that has been there for over 20 years is uh, $300. Mm -hmm. For each of the tools, it'll be $100 each to service them, you know, once a year. So there's no additional cost there. The units are all self-contained. There's no oil to change, and there's uh, no chances of breaking hose lines or spilling oil anywhere that we can do now. There's no gas or additional engines. So the, the main thing. current unit is gas operated. Yes. Okay. It uh, you you attach a hose to a, a power plant and it's, it's then a, attach it's it to hydraulic the, unit. the unit. It's hydraulic as far as it goes. Um, and these are just mechanical. These are these are battery operated. Yeah, but I mean, the battery in, here. In, term, in terms yeah. of the operation, there's no hydraulics in it. There. The oil is inside oh, yeah. the <laughs> unit as far as they go. Yeah. 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 And that's it. And there's no worrying about whether the gas engine starts or if uh, you know you're going to maintain the engine. They're all self-contained. And we're getting. Just one battery per unit? Uh, no, we're, we're actually going to have uh, a battery for each of the a spare battery for each of the units as far as it goes. But any of the batteries can be switched within the units as far as it goes. They also will have a uh, electric plug-in. So if for, for some reason the batteries all fail, we can plug that in and run it off a generator as far as capacity. The batteries do not gain memory like your, your tools that uh, you have uh, today as far as drills and things like that. Uh, less personnel to uh, set up and operate. The batteries charge at 100% uh, in 60 minutes. It uh, provides optimal freedom for movement, rapid deployment, and uh, you know, just press the start button and, and go. The uh, units can be operated inside where the gas powered ones cannot, so enclosed areas. And that uh, that is the benefits of those particular units. Do you have any questions or about Who is your gentleman friend? Uh, Gentlemen, oh, IPS. Where the vendor? They're, they're the vendor uh, from IPS. Uh, he <coughs> came from uh, Massachusetts this morning to uh, 
um, bring these units up at our request so that uh, if there was any questions, uh, we could uh, have them here to explain them. Thank you. So we're actually in the Hampshire base now. We just moved to Salem for a moment. Great. That's it? That's it. Okay. <coughs> Do we have any public comment? Steve? If the tax collector could use those. <laughs> um, seeing no further public comment, are we ready to vote to accept this? Uh, I will. I will move that we accept uh, accept this gift. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that allows. Is there any trade in? Did you say? Yes. That will allow the trade in of the town property, right? In your motion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for no, coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to do this bid next. Come on, wait, Chief. I can. So. Okay, the night, next item for business is request for proposal that we sent out. The town of Tuftabur is seeking proposals for qualified environmental consultants to assist on the town's behalf of the environmental administration of a former town landfill located at 20 Sergeant's Crossing Road. Um, DES site number 198405083. Thank you. Project number 106. The groundwater permit of 198405083-T-006. Uh, our permit's been renewed for another five years. And we're looking for a company to do this monitoring. And it seems we've got a bunch of bids. We're not going to award <coughs> a bid today. We're just going to open what we've got. So. Do we have a letter opener, Karen? Um, I will get the one. Yep. It looks like we need it. Yeah. <laughs> we need that tool back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want that big one on the bottom. But yeah, that's a that's scary, isn't it? No. Yeah. I'm gonna let Bill Marks and read that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the education. Well, no, no, I don't. It's not sharp. It's not sharp. <laughs> so the first bid is from Horizon Engineering. We're gonna have who are we gonna have review these for completeness? Do you know? Um Clay. I would think that Mr. Wingate, if he was up to it, he knows a heck of a lot more about this stuff than I do. Uh, that would be my suggestion. All right, so we're going to have to have um, Stephen and um, Clay get together. Verizon's bid is an estimate of $2,200. One of the time and materials. The next bid is Weston and Sampson. Services that they're proposing. So, we need to review them. 
This one is from EnviroTrack, um, Nashville. <coughs> Excuse me. And their proposal is for sixty six hundred. pretty well they're coming their bid is coming in at seventy nine hundred and fifty dollars engineering Hydrogeochemical. Seven thousand two hundred and eighty five dollars. The next bid is from TR Selling Engineering. Similar projects. 
That helps. Their bid estimate is $17,500. So. This is a <coughs> Do we have any scissors? Sorry, there's nothing over here. We don't need some. Associates of Westbrook, Maine, and their bid is for eighty-seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. Scotch tape on their desk. Okay, the next one is from uh, NSAFE. Right. 
Yeah, these are all just a little different, and I, that's why we really do need to um, need to review them all because this one has uh, a total estimate of thirteen thousand seven hundred dollars broken in two pieces: sixty-six hundred for the water quality reporting, seventy-one hundred for the post-closure monitoring reporting. <coughs> In the box, did that come from Sanborn Head? It did, yeah. Yeah. So it looks to be just a compilation of all of the previous testing that's been done. It's a maps. Hmm. It's, they don't feel that filing is comprehensive. <coughs> All right. So should we put, when, when were we planning on awarding this? Do we have some idea? Well, we need to award it before the, the monitoring has to happen. Right. Sufficiently in advance that whoever can need, so, is, so has, so. Is, is the successful bidder uh, can be mobilized and be on site. So I would think within a few weeks we would. Uh, uh, yeah, don't lose. Thank you. Don't lose that. Uh, so how, how long will it? I guess my question is how long will it take for whoever we're going to have, Steve and whoever reviewed these, to be in a position to come back to us with. Uh, uh, yeah, and analysis a, and the recommendation. It seems to be a real right. group of them in the seven to eight thousand dollar range, and then everybody else is way over. And I don't understand whether they misconstrued what our scope of work might be, or whether they just charge more money. Yeah. So I guess I yep. have to look at those. Do you mind getting involved, Steve? Uh, the part that I think is difficult is if we want to check their references right. for the towns that they serve mm -hmm. to, right. to see if they feel like they get good service and how they're built for questions or you know minor questions or things like that. Well, how about if we break the task up a little bit then? Have you guys look at them for reasonably um, facilitating the need? And then when it comes to the reference checking, they'll come back to us and we'll do that. And we, if we could narrow it down to... So if, 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 you, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you can come back and say, here's the ones that make the most sense to us and here's why, yeah. and then we can do some further... Yeah. And then we'll check for references check and see how their, <coughs> how their work is. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I think, yeah, there were, two, there were two things. Biggest interest of us is service, right. and quality service without any... Uh, extra charges of for right. seems like unreasonable and and then the other was depth of capability if if we want <coughs> additional service do they have it right. okay let's do that sounds like a plan Good. so that's the question how long do you think it was well, I think there, it could be two difficult parts of this. One would be checking references, which is a lot of phone calls, because there's a lot of them. Right. So you, and you have to come up with some standard questions. Right. right. But and then we're, we're going to do that, and we're not going to do it for all of them. We're going to do it for the top three or whatever yeah, in right. terms of the ranking. Well, the, well, the other one could be, because there are differences, there are groups of differences <coughs> in what they fit. Right. Check, check, check me back with them to find out what, what, why it's different. Right. If we can't figure it out from what they... Okay, do you think you could do a quick read-through in a week? At night? There's nothing on television, I'll yeah. just tell you. Yeah. Larry's gone for a week. That's <coughs> uh, All right, well let's... I mean, two weeks? Yeah, okay, two weeks. All right. Yeah, I think so you'd have it by uh, election day, which is... Yeah, that would be perfect. And then yeah. we can uh, 
<coughs> sort out some tasks about making some phone calls and see what we can come up with. Great. Thanks. Okay. All right, next item for business is public input. Okay. Steve Wingate. <coughs> the often bumpy road of acquiring the uh, Sergeant Phelps property uh, just yesterday. Uh, we, when we surveyed, the Sergeant property came out to be more acres than uh, the, our, the original deed said. So the, uh, the family would like a letter from the selectmen. Uh, uh, indicating that they're donating the additional acres, they'll probably use that for uh, tax. Well, they're going to make a lot of money to take that to the uh, Rick, do you have a per acre? Rick Sager is recommending <coughs> this. Yeah. Uh, so, because uh, I'm here, I'm just <coughs> telling you they they uh, they asked they wanted that before they actually signed the deed. He's all ready to go. Otherwise, so. Uh, do you have a per acre? Amount that we're paying for this? Yeah. Okay. And are you guys? There's not a. There are, it was, it was an initial 13.69 acres. Yeah. And we we're, we essentially on the original 90 acres that we thought was there. We uh, the. The, the number we we settled on a negotiation. It was appraised higher, but we settled on a thousand dollars an acre. Okay. So what they want to do is uh, uh, about thirteen thousand dollars. The yeah, that they're donating thirteen thousand six hundred and ninety dollars worth of okay. land value. <coughs> and you have it in writing that the lawyer uh, recommends this. Yes, yeah. I'm going to give this to Karen. Okay. This is the email train that goes with it. I only I was only copied on the last one where uh, Rick said I don't see a problem with your request, and uh, then the rest of the message is about he wants to get the deed done and the payment and he'll catch up on this. Uh, so I'll move that the uh, board uh, provide a letter to uh, uh, the seller. Uh, uh, acknowledging the donation uh, of 13.6 .6 acres uh, as part of the Great North Project. So I second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Um, <coughs> review and approval of minutes. Just uh, okay. Tuesday, February 11th at 9 o'clock, the regular minutes. I have no issues with the uh, minutes. I move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Tuesday, February 11th, non public minutes. I have no issues. <coughs> move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And <coughs> <coughs> um, we're going to do some job performance reviews. Nice. I like this blank piece of paper. Want to do that on the correspondence? Yeah. Okay. And let's see. Fire department's next, but let me clean up some trash before I bring up the chief. Show respect. Can we throw those in? Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. Sure. And check the roll circuit. Oh, yeah, I want to throw the scissors in the roll There. Okay. Chief Thompson, welcome back. Did you cut my truck up while I was busy? <laughs> 
Yeah, my only concern is the batteries, because I have gone through batteries during my project, mm -hmm. they're a lot smaller and oh, yeah. you know, drills and saws. And yeah, they, they last for, uh, the batteries last for four to six years, yeah. as far as uh, the units. They are $800, yeah. or up to $800 as far as replacement costs, but as far as using them, yeah, wise, you're not going to be running that thing. Yeah, no. You, you can thing. get 48 cuts out of uh, which is basically single cutting charge. up a car out of a single charge. charge. Yeah. Uh, when when we had the vehicles up to the uh, landfill, uh, we were yeah. going through them, and it was cold, uh, and, and they were holding up as far as it was. Yeah. So yeah. it 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 took some convincing. To go battery. to battery operated, you know, versus battery uh, battery. Um, but everything is battery, yeah. and the extrication that we did on the road, it, it <sighs> after doing the practice with with the units, and then using our units that had uh, the uh, the lines that are in place and they're getting in the way and. Yeah. Um, Oh, well, the, so the ones you had used the same thing, but after you use well, the, the, yeah, after you use a new one, you use the, the others. It's, it's what is this difference. piece of junk, right? Oh. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the dependable. But he's this about the same weight. Yes. Yeah, they're they're about the same weight as far as it goes. Um, obviously, you have the battery that is attached to them. Where you would just have hoses that come in, right. uh, core technology, one hose that fastens into the back. Um, but you don't have the engine that is running there making the noise. You heard how you know, quiet that yeah. was. All the um, spill possibilities. Right. Just having that much hose running. Yep. Sure. Yeah, you can, you can cut the hose, you can do whatever. I mean, don't get me wrong, we, we, still, we will still have a single power unit that um, attaches the hoses and stuff like that because we have one unit that is still reliable and, and usable. Um, and it also has our, uh, our uh, a, a part of the jaws that we don't have as far as uh, um, spreading capabilities. Um, we, we opted not to purchase that at this point in time um, because to get the other units you know, in place as far as it goes because we, we don't so do a lot an, more. Is that an exchangeable end or is that a different unit? Uh, as far as the there is uh, a cutter and a spreader that we currently have that we can transition over to battery operated for half the, the price of you know, a, a new right. unit. So those are still uh, a possibility. Um, the only thing that we can't do um, is uh, what's called a RAM, and that is uh, something like this, where they put it in one part of the car, and you're actually pushing the dash up and stuff like that. Yeah. Or or other capabilities that, that, that you want to do with that. Our RAM cannot be converted over to, to battery, so right. that, that would be additional costs, you know, somewhere down down the road. But we've, you know, obviously with the cutter and the spreader that we still have that are on our rescue truck, it has the RAM also. So we're, we're keeping that all in, in place. All right. But it's a great addition as far as, uh, you know, replacing the outdated unit that is on range one and being able to have a, a cutter that will supplement the other uh, the other tools and then uh, the additional combi tool is going on our ambulance so that we'll have that stuff there. So. Okay. We uh, currently have uh, the emergency management generator back. It was nine hundred, excuse me, nine thousand forty-one dollars and forty-six cents. Nine hundred and eight dollars and fifty-four cents less than the final estimate. Uh, there was fifteen thousand dollars that was encumbered, uh, so we didn't uh, we didn't use all of that. But it did come from the encumbered funds for two thousand nineteen for for fixing that. 
to Beer Fest and the Fish and Derby weekend were, were uneventful for us as far as fire department. We started out for a couple calls, reference ice rescues, um, but were canceled uh, prior to launching our airboat. And those uh, actually were in other towns. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we were notified by our furnace uh, person that the Melbourne unit uh, will have to be replaced in 2021. It's uh, starting to um, have some cracks and things in uh, inside the uh, the furnace unit itself that uh, that can't be repaired. Uh, the the unit is over 20 years old and uh, has served us well as far as uh, the station yeah. was uh, much better than our units in our, our central station. Um, an agreement between Lakes Region Planning Commission and the Town of Tuftonville needs to be signed by the Board of Selectmen for the Hazardous Mitigation Plan update. This secures the LRPC to uh, complete the plan and then uh, a federal grant for 75% and 25% of the town will be in effect. The $7,500 um, grant side for uh, for that will be coming from the feds and 2500 from the town uh, for a total of $10,000. And we budgeted $4,000 in 2020's budget. Um, and so it's it's come in less that we would have to uh, right. And, and that, the, the grant is a grant to LRPC rather yes. than us, right? Correct. So we don't have to come up with a full amount. Right. Um, and there's a possibility that the group that we get together, the uh, last time we did the hazardous mitigation <coughs> planning, uh, we had to have a group of like five to seven people. They'd be like a select board, uh, police chief, fire chief, road agent, um, some people from town. Um, their time can go towards the matching $2,500. So there's a possibility that we won't have to come up with the $2,500 in the long run, but we have it there in the budget if we need to, and if not, it'll just go back to uh, um, the general fund in the end. And is that in the signature file now? Uh, I just received the, the agreement, so, so we don't have it um, I'll give it to you so you can review it. Great. And I actually have two, two copies. Okay. I will uh, continue to look into this other information that we talked about earlier um, for that grant that we had just found out about. To right. See if, uh, yeah. if we can get that from the radio stuff mm -hmm. coming up to 2021. And uh, if so, right. that's all I have. Any questions for the chief? No. Uh, the, heat, the heating system at Melbourne. Yes. Is that uh, or not air? Yes. Yeah. Oil uh, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And the question that you had in reference to pond, I did yeah. see that. I did get pictures of it, and I saw the same thing at the library. Oh. So, Any idea? Uh, I mean, or, yeah. Uh, I would say it's some type of, you know, either iron type thing that is uh, coming through. It's not. I don't believe it's from the, the piping because it's all plastic right. uh, and the ends are not, uh, uh, they're plastic also. Um, but I figured that once the, the snow melts again, maybe we can get a sample yeah. if you want to go that far. Or, well, like, you know, it could, <coughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, it, it could be some type of uh, allergy or something. That, that mm -hmm. I've never seen it before, but it's, but know. we have it in two. Yeah. Probably some bit of the drone dropping. <laughs> <laughs> Yours was much brighter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the taxes are it, it, Yours almost looked like someone that, you know, was it I been it, cut yeah. out. <laughs> right. That's Jimmy Hoppers coming back. All right. Oh, dear. Hmm. All right. No other questions? Yeah. Have a great day. <clears throat> All right. Next agenda is the motion for the police.
How's it going? A little busier. You can see in some cases. <coughs> Our, um, last month, I don't know if you looked at the... Uh, <coughs> we were down on patrol because <coughs> we had a, several, uh, we had a pretty big investigation into uh, cars that were broken into. Um, obviously, that uh, caused us to spend a significant part of our investigation budget already. Um, and I have to order some supplies to make up for what we used to. Um, so, you can see our car stops are up, and some of these are up. The rest about the same, felonies are up. And actually, felonies might be more than that because some of those car thefts that were reported as being reported as felonies actually turned out to be felonies because the person had two or more prior thefts. So it made them felonies. So the first car I steal, I'm not going to get charged with a felony? A car you might be, depending on what the value is. If you steal a small thing from a car, it's not a felony. Unless you, do it prior, unless you do it multiple times. Unless you do it multiple times with convictions. Uh, you just don't show up to court here. Posting on the outside of your station so that everyone knows. And <coughs> they put calls down, mm -hmm. but that's kind of, um, it's not just us, that's fire, EMS. Fishing game, everybody, but it shows what's that there's been an increase in the number of calls into dispatch relative to stuff in tough tomorrow. <coughs> that coming into dispatch, typically it's some emergency service, anyways. So, and what is an unattended death? Somebody who died without being, uh, uh, oh, died in their house, and died in their house, there. and no yeah. one, well, somebody could be there, but not a doctor or. Um, that they had to make. You have to you have to have the ME come out and certify. Yep. So that that took several hours. And then we had uh, 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 Chief Thompson talked about the beer fest. Um, we the had incidents there. We did that DWI with somebody leaving there. Um, and the other thing that was a problem I think we're going to have to address is people walking away were carrying containers of alcohol, told they can't carry it away, but it was like having one officer there was like a squeegee against the tide yeah. because people were just, it's not a controlled entrance or exit. They kind of walk around, they could, so they could walk around and they were just dumping there. Cups and you know trash barrel. Either they were either two issues. One wasn't enough restrictions and control on them leaving. The second issue was when they were told you can't be carrying that, they were just throwing them wherever. Uh, What's the solution? Uh, that's going to be an interesting thing because I mean obviously they're out in an open area, kind of walking away. Uh, something that. I did talk so, to so there was there was one detail officer. Is that there was right? one detail officer. Yeah. So is more de is a, a larger detail help the situation? It may. It may also maybe put some more burden on them as to restricting it, and also talk to them about. So you need, you need to amount set, of service. Set up a meeting with the beverage. Yes. And figure out. I mean, yeah. know what your concerns are. I mean, we want to keep having it. We just don't want to have it get out of control. Um, <coughs> I have some compliments I'd like to share with him. Go for it. Uh, thank you for dedicating an officer to the special event at 19 Mile Bay. Thank you for dedicating police officers to the elections. Things went well. Um, my compliments to you on the press release about the theft from vehicles. Any luck on the firearms being located? Not yet. But, uh, compliments to you and your department. Uh, uh, the other thing is please compliment your sergeant. He makes an effort to be there at the opening of the school. He, uh, and as he says, he can run off to an accident, but uh, it hasn't gone unnoticed. 
couple of questions I'd like to ask you about uh, the employee job performance reviews. I was working on them when I got sick, so I'm still trying to catch up, but I have them yeah. on, next thing on my list to do. I had to catch up with some court stuff after right. I got back to. Uh, and I realize you're busy. The other thing is your new officer is eligible for a pay adjustment? Yes. Can you get that work so we can approve it? Will. It will. Didn't that happen already? I thought the sergeant came in. The sergeant came in and asked about it, but I guess I was, he told me that he approved it, but then Karen told me it hadn't been approved by the minutes. So uh, The last I had in the minutes was that you wanted to meet with him regarding wage. All right, well, we're meeting with him. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to, so what happened was when I put my budget together, I took her from where she was to the next grade up, which is typically what happens when you go from prob probationary to you know, to a new scale, if you will. She went to there and I went up. I didn't want to, obviously she's not going back and pay, so I went to the next step. The problem with that, after I looked at it, when I was actually, I didn't look at it, I was on the phone with the sergeant from the hospital, was, uh, if she'd stayed where she was, she'd be making more money than if she'd gone to that where I planned it. It's a, it's a couple hundred dollars. I can, I can deal with it within my budget, I'm sure. So that's why it was gonna be more than what I had originally said. I, I can get that number to you. It's, it, I thought it was 25 something. And that would be, and that would be the number. I went by the 2020 scales. In other words, she wouldn't be getting another jump after do you, something. Do you have that paperwork available to go get? I can, I can get it pretty quick. It's not right on the tip of my hands. But if you can, yeah. I'd be willing to act on it today. I think yeah, if you're still meeting, I'll bring it right back in. Yeah, we'll do that. A compliment to you, you hired a stellar officer there. Well, hopefully we, we can uh, keep some of these people. Uh, it's uh, obviously looking around the area. I know of two agencies around us that have two openings each over the next mm -hmm. few months. One has one now, one it, uh, actually it's two now, and we'll probably have another one coming up. Yep. In a, in a, that's to the north of us and then to the south of us to get any two openings. Uh, and you know, I know what's trying to fill those positions is gonna, not going to be easy and they may um, Hopefully not try and poach. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully we'll I had another issue <clears throat> on my own. I investigated with people at the, the working at the library, and it seems that a hottier system for the new police station is the way to go. As I read the current architect, <coughs> I don't know what an HU sixteen is. Or it is a it is a hot air system. It is a, it is a forced hot air system, but it also does the cooling. But it is it uses electric to generate it through not through resistance but through a heat exchanger heat pump, yeah. heat pump. Mm -hmm. like like that split. But because it's a big unit that does the whole building at one, mm -hmm. it uses it's three, three phase. phase. Yeah. Which yep. gets into maybe several issues. Yeah, but as, as we discussed, the, the customer charge for three phase is more than single phase. But the big piece for the fire station was was the usage, yeah. and that was associated with the uh, fire pump. Yeah. Okay, so the fire pump is a, is requires a huge amount of electricity to run. So you you size your bill based upon the maximum usage. We're off of that schedule because we don't run the fire pump on uh, the grid. Right. When I mean, obviously, if it has to run on its own, it's going to run off the grid. But the once a year we run it now, we run it off the generator. So we isolate it from the grid. It's on the generator. It runs and it, and it does fine, and it doesn't bump our customer charge up. So the customer charge for three phase smaller user is not huge, like the one we had at the oh, at fire. This is the, for the heating and cooling, so right. it's going to be used. Okay, but the, but the big user at the fire station is the fire pump. Yeah. Okay, you're not going to have a a sprinkler system right. in this building. Right. Okay, so you're not going to have that huge user. I mean, we'll take a look at what the 
Yeah, yeah, I don't know how much this uses when it runs. That's the only thing. So I, I'm not sure we're married to anything at this point. No, no we're not. I mean, no. I, I look at. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that the proposed number of sixty-eight thousand dollars for the photovoltaic system is premised on some sort of three-phase need, because that's so far out of the picture as far as I'm concerned about money. I mean, it's at least twice as expensive as any other 18K or 20K system that I've ever seen. So there must be some factor that's coming into that. Yeah, yeah. And it may be that we, we have to revisit all of these systems, like the, the heat pump system and all the rest of it. We really <coughs> make it work. That's I think they were looking for the lead efficiency is why that heat pump system right. is right. looked at. Right. Right. But anyway, it's like corporations, which you can't just look at profit. We have to look at everything else. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so looking for electric cruisers, so that's yeah. they, they did. They did offer an upcharge for a char for a charging station. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because I know you guys aren't driving more than 300 miles a day, so I think there's. No, we don't. We, we typically drive uh, at a good day, maybe 100. Just yeah. A little over. Yeah. The question is, how do they do with emergency lights and all that other stuff? Yeah, I don't know if you, anybody even makes one now, but I mean, ultimately that would be a perfect use for one. I can remember years ago, I much used better acceleration than you're going to get out of your photography. I remember years ago, IACP and Michigan State Police, and for a while, New Hampshire State Police were involved in going to Detroit and testing um, future cruisers. Does IACP still do that? Uh, no, Mi Michigan State Police and LA Sheriff's Department do testing. Uh, I believe it's LAPD it does have a Tesla that they're doing. I think it was Ontario Provincial Police did submit to nice. Tesla a mock-up of the cyber truck as a, as a cruiser for well, the... I, I remember a few months... Taunting uh, yeah. Elon Musk to, right. what do you think? A, a few months back, yeah, responded. some police department out in California was in hot pursuit driving. And the battery died. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so the engine could blow. I mean, that, yeah. yeah. You run out of gas. But right. The well, problem is, if you get down low, it takes you yeah. time to recharge. Right. And maybe it's a, maybe it's a uh, hybrid. I don't know. Well, anyway. <clears throat> it's great changing. to look at alternatives. Certainly. But, but as, as I say, with the free with the three phase, the issue at the fire station was the was the large use uh, of power, and and at the large requirement, and the large requirement specifically tied to that the uh, sprinkler fire pump on that right? motor on that right. But I don't know how big a motor is on this compressor either. No, nowhere near as big. Okay, That's so right. I mean we'll we'll look at it, but it's uh, uh, the upcharge just. Going to three phase from single phase for and then maybe it's and maybe it's just pump efficiency. I mean, if they're really the reason you go three phase is because it's it uses the electricity much yeah, more, more efficiently, efficient. right? So if you if you're doing a um, geothermal, for instance, right. you want to have the most efficient pumps you can have. So right. maybe that's what, yeah. Yeah. all right. Yeah. We'll figure it all out. I'm sure <coughs> somebody will. If you could get that thing for your officer, I'd like to make sure she gets yeah, her. I'll work on it right now. Thank you for your efforts. It's, uh, thanks, Chief. Is Dennis Salambo here? Yep, just saw him go by. The guy that's got the longest letter in the town report of any department. He's just getting to know us, I guess. Right, while we're we Oh, I can't. Can you see? Yeah. I was going to run through this list of non-public minutes. Go ahead. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna make a motion that we unseal the previously sealed non-public minutes of 10-14-16 at 11.02, 10-7-19 at 9.02, 8-26-19 at 8.30 a.m., 8-12-19 at 8.41 a.m., 8-5-19 at 8.40 a.m., <coughs> and 11.33 a.m., 7.1.19 at 9.57 a.m., 6.24.19 at 11.53 a.m., 5.6.19 at 8.35 a.m., 
4.22.19 at 8.43 a.m. 4.21.19 at 9.50 a.m. 7.22.19 at 8.30 a.m. 3.12.19 at 10.20 a.m. 12.23.19 Seven two eighteen at eight thirty five a.m. Seven nine eighteen at eight thirty a.m. Eight twenty seven eighteen at eleven fifty six a.m. Eleven twenty six eighteen at eight thirty a.m. Eleven nineteen eighteen at one o two p.m. Eleven five eighteen at ten o five a.m. Eleven six eighteen at eight thirty a.m. And again on eleven six at eight forty three a.m. I'll second that. No all, the, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Good morning, Mr. Jack. It's Good like the, it's like the uh, oh, yeah. coastal weather report in Britain. Yes. Just From the rain. Right. And did you move on it, Jeff? Is that yeah. I did. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll give you the Thank list, you. Karen, so that yep. I started reading it out, Jeff. Not a problem. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Now for Mr. Dennis Zalembo, right. the author of the longest article in Tamil Court, I noticed. Right. A what? Okay, perfect. I'm going as I get older. Well, it's springtime almost, huh? Yep. He's got his sap buckets up. Yeah, I got the sap buckets up. Yeah, see, I don't know enough about that. I don't either. I'm going to go anything. see Jackie's set up at some point. But yeah. Anyway, uh, Good news is we got flyers out last week before the vacation week to the uh, all the schools <coughs> on this flag football we talked about at the last meeting. I'll uh, just give you a copy for me. Uh, it's funny how you do this with the school system. You had to have Pox and Rec on the flyer or they wouldn't pass it out. Yep. But we have a, a <coughs> demo day planned up at Kingswood uh, on Saturday, March 7th. And Bob Jalou is going to bring all some of his players, shirts, and our idea is to get as many of our interested people involved uh, with that. Uh, the goal is, again, I think the fall is really the starting point. The springtime, I think we're going to try and send our kids, if we get a good turnout, up to Meredith to play. But the goal here is, to, I think, the fall is to, to have our own flag football league uh, right here in, in this mm -hmm. area. And again, I, I told you before, I'm trying to push to have it right up here at the Davis uh, playground. So uh, that's good news. That's progressing, I think. A lot of good people involved. Um, we did have our Valentine program upstairs on the 8th. Uh, not, not well attended, which I find sometimes, since I've been here, some of the events on uh, you expect 30, you get six, you know. But the people that were here had, uh, had a great time. They stayed for two hours. They decorated cupcakes, cookies, made cards, had coloring contests. So uh, that was a good event. It was a new event. So, uh, you know, we can look at that. Big class is March 4th. Uh, Sign-ups are going good on that. <clears throat> uh, these are count the 11th of April. Uh, again, hopefully weather permitting up at the uh, field. Um, we got a new program, and again, I think it was a spin-off from our basketball clinics. Most parents are interested, and me being a music buff, uh, it's Saturday in the park. <laughs> I think it was the 4th of July. That's Chicago, by the way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and what it is, it's basically going to be an hour and a half of just fun games, kind of a, 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 a PE period, you could call it. Uh, but the kids loved it so much, like I said, we got a good list of those parents with their emails, and we're going to uh, certainly send them the flyer and invite them. Uh, and it's going to be the four, hopefully the five Saturdays. I know there's Memorial Day mixed in there, but uh, we're trying to get the five Saturdays. Uh, just no pressure, no coaches, no uniforms, no schedule. Just come in and have a, have a good hour and a half of fun. And we try and get the parents involved also with that. So. I think they, they enjoyed that. On the lookout again, uh, we're always looking for lifeguards, commission members, and old home days. Uh, on the old home days, uh, that beach day, and, and again, the schedule is uh, August 21, 22, 23, I believe the weekend before Labor Day. Uh, 
But the beach day, it's starting to shape up pretty good. That's that Saturday, which is kind of going to include the boat race, but it's called the beach day. We booked a, a band called the Echo Tones. Uh, they're going to come in. We do have a cornhole. We've got a, a good contact with the school. they got a dozen cornhole set up, so we're going to run a cornhole tournament that day. So the, which one of the days is beach day, 22nd? The what? Saturday. Beach day is which day? The 22nd? It's that Saturday, the, uh, is it the 22nd? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the boat race, the cardboard boat race is, uh, is going to happen that same time period. We don't have times yet. And then we're also involved in a chili cook-off the same day under the pavilion. So it should be a fun day. Uh, Are you cooking? Uh, mine is in there. And if I don't win, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> uh, when I'm making it for me, it's hot, but I think when I make it for the people, it's. Uh, you tone it, it down. Yeah, tone it down a little bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> again, the yard sale uh, is coming up June 6th. Uh, the summer kickoff, which is the last time to sign up for lessons, is June 27th. The lessons begin July 6th through August 7th, and our concert series begins uh, July 9th. Uh, we booked the Big Picture Band, the Granite Planet, Wood Nichols Band, Brian Hastings and Sky Road, Terry Collins Band, and of course the last one is Callan Ramsey. Uh, any of these repeats? Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, one, two, three. <coughs> uh, three of them are repeated. Great. So, yeah, so that's good. It's a good combination. I think so, yeah. Uh, and again, you know, I think we're, we're reaching out, and I, I really would like to talk to you guys off record uh, about it some potential fundraising, potential sponsors. Uh, we just, we got some ideas and uh, we do have a budget to get some of the stuff, but there's other ideas we want to push forward and uh, I'll get to you guys at another day. Uh, well, if you want to talk to us off the record, you have to do it individually. Right. Individually? Well, yeah. I talked about it a little bit last week yeah. about some of the stuff we yeah. talked about. I mean, if we're sitting here, yeah. unless it's legal or um, personnel. Personnel. Yeah. I mean, everything everything the board does is in public. public. I see. Okay. Yeah. No, so, I understand. So, uh, I don't a, good, a good first to bounce it off of is your rep. Yeah. Your selectman's rep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll do that. That's my report. Right. Um, outside of that, my team went up to uh, Canada on Saturday and played my grandson. How'd they do? Well, they played the night before in Hanover, which is a two-hour drive, and uh, Hanover beat my team by 34. Mm. So they beat Hanover. So now my team is playing them the next day, this past Saturday. So my grandson walks in and we hug and kiss and, you know, wish him well. He says, Papa, I don't think I'm going to start today. I says, how come? He says, well, our coach says we're playing a lousy team, so we're not going to play our best players. Blood started to boil. Ah. Was, that, was that bulletin board material? That was. <laughs> you believe it. So we're tied at halftime, 28-28. Come out second half, won two points all the way, right down to the end. We're down two with 40 seconds to go. My kid goes right, guy goes for a steal. One of my guys goes right by, just about to lay it in to tie the score. And the horn goes off. The buzzer goes off. There's still 40 seconds to go. So, of course, you know, me being Mr. Calm, <laughs> uh, went a little crazy on that. But, uh, I just basically home cooking. No tea. No, I didn't get a tea. Uh, so, long story short, uh, we got the ball out of bounds, didn't score, foul, and we lose by four. We're playing in two more weeks at our place. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why is there a gleam in your eye, Randall? My grandson was my grandson was the top. He had twenty something points. He played awesome. You know, we went out, uh, had a bite to eat afterwards, and uh, I'm happy. But I was, you know what I mean? It was kind of a mixed feeling. Yeah. Learning experience. Uh, being a team. That's not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, gentlemen? No. Thank so, you for what's yeah. your next meeting? Uh, it's the what's it called? Thursday in uh, March.
Do you plan on attending that? I'm hoping I can. I'm hoping to. What day of the market, month of March? It's the second, is it the second or first? I think it's the... It'd have to be the 13th, because yeah. it's 6 yeah. and 6.30, yep, 6.30. Okay. And again, looking for commission members, looking for lifeguards, and certainly people that want to get involved with the whole, whole home days. Uh, ideas, volunteers, uh, help with the picnic, scavenger hunt, help on beach day. Uh, so we're trying to get geared up for that too. But we need more people. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Have, have a great week. Sir. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Thanks, Spring. Huh? How are you feeling, Karen? Better, thanks. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, my man. <coughs> All right, I'm going to go to the signature file. Um, did you guys have a chance to look at the Lakes Region Planning Commission Natural Hazards Mitigation Plan update? No, because he just gave it to you. Uh, okay. The chief just, just handed it to you here. Oh, I thought... Karen you hasn't even seen it yet. You haven't even seen it? Well, why, why do I have it here? Yeah. <laughs> we'll put it in for your next meeting. All right. Okay. Good. Um, so the first item for signature is Ron Sunquist, who's moving from full membership to alternate membership on the... Agricultural Commission. I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The second is Kathleen Murphy, who's moving to alternate status on the Conservation Commission. I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The next item is Stephen Scapiccio, is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Just all that stuff. Who's a new <coughs> member of the Conservation Commission? I'll move. Good. I'll move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next is a elderly exemption. Really? That's all? We only have to be that old? Um, it's a, this citizens quali qualifies for the elderly exemption of $20,000 reduction of property ID numbers 56-4-7. Move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the next is a uh, timber cutting application for Max, MAP 65 Block 3, Lot 2. The taxes are not currently paid, but the logger has posted a bond, which is attached. I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. is a letter of thanks to Ray Everest, who's, I guess, moved to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. But Ray did a lot of work for our Conservation Commission for their website. And he's willing to continue to do it long right. distance. Oh, great. I'm approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I attend 
attended the library building team meeting uh, a week ago, last Thursday. And uh, the report that progress is continuing to move along. I know that the library currently is closed as they're moving the collection from the existing building into the new addition. It will reopen on the 4th of March in the new area, and then the contractor will be, will be doing renovation in the, in the existing part of the building. Uh, the next, their next meeting is Thursday of this week. And going back. Yeah. Um, Even if I had to stay the uh, Development Block Grant is doing a site visit to North Country Village tomorrow uh, in connection with the grant application. And uh, I will be attending that it's at uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning at the park. I have a meeting at 9 Conway, so I can do that. Yep. I have a doctor's appointment. Uh, Thank you for filling in. The other thing I'll, I will mention is on Thursday the 5th of March at the Planning Board regular meeting. Uh, planning Board attorney will be there uh, presenting a workshop on short-term rentals. Uh, we've, we've been looking at, yep, at, at uh, appropriate ways to deal with the changes in the short-term rental market. Uh, and uh, uh, so he's going to be there to provide a presentation and answer questions. Uh, Let's see make if the state has done much on that. Well, there's a, there is a bill in the Senate authored by a local senator uh, to prevent, if I understand it correctly, to prevent towns from being able to do any regulation on rentals. Uh, short-term rentals, uh, which <clears throat> I find kind of curious. Uh, yeah, but uh, hopefully that won't go any, any place. Uh, a number of towns currently have uh, have some sort of regulation control on short-term rentals. There are a number of issues, uh, not the least of which is that a short-term rental uh, has different life safety requirements than. Right. A regular house, uh, and uh, uh, in, in talking with Chief Thompson, we don't have any mechanism <coughs> in Tuftonboro for dealing with that. Uh, so, well, we have he, the he becomes aware of them when there's an issue and they and they're into a place, but there is there isn't any. Uh, there aren't any life safety inspections that are and done. There aren't any zoning that would require Jack to go in and do an inspection, the chief of the fire chief to go in and do an inspection. We also don't have, I mean, looking at the other end of it, it there, those Airbnb places aren't paying rooms and meals taxes. They're just renting rooms and making money, which is fine. People should make money, but. <coughs> it does impact the services. Yeah. Provide. Yep. So. It does. So anyway, that is on uh, up at the townhouse on the fifth of March. If you guys are interested, I'm going to be out of town, unfortunately. Uh, that are you going to take it, Joe? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Probably yeah. planning yeah. board. Thank you. Uh, presentation on short-term rentals by the planning board attorney. On the fifth Did you see the um, March? I thought, I th I thought I sent an email about um, there's a bill to make it so towns can't regulate them. Right. Yeah. Which is a I see as several problems. I think most towns see just several yeah. problems. Yeah. And I think I thought they're supposed to pay the tax. Yeah, it's kind of the issue. Who's doing it? I thought so Airbnb is supposed to collect it. Really? Right. I'll but, ask Heather if she's getting any Airbnb checks. Well, doesn't it go to the state and the state sends yes. it back? Yes, under room and meals, right? Yes, yeah. rooms and meals that goes direct to the state. Mm -hmm. and but there's always a question as to whether or not it's accurate. Accurate. And sure. And part of the issue with the bill is originally as proposed, it exempted it from uh, fire safety codes and 
other nuisance codes that uh, we haven't had the issues we almost had one here last year uh, there was a house that was going to be rented out through vrmo we heard about it it was going to be rented by uh, some high school students from the southern part of the state and they were going to have a big bash right on the lake uh, we got wind of it through that other agency called the owner and he canceled their reservation causing a lot of problems but but it was going to be a, a you know we're only supposed to have 14 people they, they invited the world from what was being told we were being hearing it's going around the school like wildfire down there other places have seen a couple issues with that you know the parking along roads when they have more people uh that's that's a big well, one and the and the internet short-term rental operators I know are uh, changing the way they're doing business to address these things because they recognize they have a good thing now and and when you start getting those these party houses going it just uh, it works against them as well as the community does the thing said every black eye you get is uh, yeah. uh, an impact on your business for sure but also I mean as more of a social issue from what I'm hearing it, some of these people are, you know they flip they're buying these houses instead of people buying and flip them to resell them now they're holding them and it, and it affects the market for housing in, mm -hmm. in multiple ways but anyway do you have something for us? Yeah, yeah. so that's that's a lot Abby Gillis, our police officer, um, go from a, a probationary rate of twenty-four dollars and one cent yep. to effective date two one twenty twenty-five dollars and fourteen cent, yep. which is so the way I that guess you've got to pay in grade. <coughs> what is there. the grade and step? It would be grade fourteen, step five. So she was a she was a step six on the grade thirteen. She would have gone to twenty four ninety one. But if, because she jumped up, I originally calculated it because she was twenty four forty two. I calculated it was like oh twenty four sixty two. That's a jump up, but it would be less than what she would have stayed if she'd stayed where she was. If you were. Right. Right. So she would have gone to twenty four ninety one. This brings it to twenty five fourteen. I make a motion we accept the chief's recommendation. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Tell the selectmen to appreciate your efforts. Okay. Uh, well, um, she needs to sign on that too. I see a signature line for her, so I'll yeah. bring that back. She'll be on and tonight. That goes on the coming school record. Yep. Okay, the one thing I forgot to bring up with you when we were here before, you're aware of the grant that we were reading about here? Yes. Okay. That uh, from Lake Street Planning right? Commission up to right. 35. By the way, he calculated by our, we could see 35%. Right. Um, so we, our, who's going to stay on top of that? Jeff Hayes is going to come and make a presentation to us. Jeff Hayes is the, the director of Lake Street. Lake Street Planning Plan Commission. Okay. So do they drive the application process? Or do you have a memo from him in correspondence? When I spoke to him, he's kind of, from what I understand, USDA will be the next to reach out to the town. Okay. Yep. He's available if needed, but I understood that they were really the ones that would be. Yeah, reached I out think to the I, town. as I read it, we have to reach out to them to reach. Yeah, they're they gonna, yeah, yeah, they're gonna reach out and tell us next steps. I guess the next. Okay. He said probably so next he's gonna days, come. So. He's gonna come in next meeting. I I understood it that his he's kind of dropping have his involvement now that USDA will be involved. But that's how I understood it. But maybe I'm I'm sure he's available for. All right, well, maybe we get some clarity on this, like how we proceed. Yeah. They want to help with the application, even he said USDA right. wants to even help with the application. Right. Which I assume yeah. would be It's the rural development. I read it before, but it goes into your population and income right. levels. But 
way Jeff calculated it, we get a possible 35%. Right. Yeah. There might be some other conditions involved that might right. involve design as well. So can you reach out to him and see what the I will check with is. him and see what he, right. where we're at with that and who's doing what and get yeah. back to you. Okay. I Listen. thought they were, they were going to be there to help write the grant. USDA. Yes. Yeah wants to help with the grant and they're supposed to reach out to us in the next couple of days he said just give them some time to absorb it and uh, you should hear from them in a couple of days all right so we can absorb on friday and maybe we can all kind of coalesce again on monday and figure out what direction we're going with this that could make a lot of difference on how we proceed sure okay 35 percent yeah <coughs> how i interrupted you brother Marcuson, on what on your, Presentation of selectmen's update. Did you have anything left? Uh, I think that was the last thing. Short term. Rental. Other than one final comment that I would make about that is we've had short term rentals and we know we've had short term rentals in this town forever. Yeah. You know, lakefront property and that sort of thing. Traditionally, uh, most of those are handled through realtors. Um, and most of the realtors yeah, agents actually go out and make sure the property is as it should be, the stuff is all there. Uh, if there's a problem when the property is being rented, everybody knows that who the rental agent is, so there's a body on the ground in the geographic area. The difference with the VRBO and Airbnb is you got somebody on a computer in Mountain View, California that's making the arrangements and handling all the financial stuff, and there isn't that hands-on person available to to uh, right. make sure that everything's right here and also be there when there are issues that come up and so uh, you know as a commercial transaction it makes perfect sense it's just uh, a disconnect from dealing with issues on the ground right I was going to just say that I contacted Jeff Hayes and we had a conversation and has what's in the best interest of the town and willing to get involved. I also read the town report, Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, nice job. Oh, thank Proof you. Reading it. Thank you. And uh, that's it for now. Okay, I have been uh, in contact on a couple of occasions over the past week with the Carroll County Broadband Initiative. We're putting together a uh, uh, petition that I'm hoping I can have a town meeting. It needs 300 signatures. We probably have 3,000 here in the town <coughs> that would petition the uh, board of directors of the New Hampshire Electric Co-op to change their bylaws to read not only providing electrical service, but facilitating the installation and um, providing fiber optic network capability for towns. Um, the co-op's been sort of resistant, but I think we've got enough votes on the board to make that happen. Um, we're one of the few towns that's mostly New Hampshire like a co-op, I think primarily a co-op. There's 70,000 hookups in the North Region aircraft and, and co-ops and down into Belknap. So there's plenty of viability. There's plenty of um, critical mass to make it happen. They've also been, we've also been talking to some service providers other than Consolidated and AT&T and Spectrum, but just installer maintenance. In other words, I'm trying to drive this towards community owned as opposed to corporate owned because we have no control as we've seen with the cable of what the rate's gonna be. If we're being asked to take our good bond rating, which is superior to any of their ability to raise money, corporations' ability, and borrow the money to do all the hardware and all the cost. <coughs> Excuse me. 
but then they're going to take that system and generate rate from them premised upon their profit needs. I think we're working at cross purposes. If we're putting all the money out, then we should have a much bigger say in how much we charge. I mean, and if we you know, charge what the co-op supposedly does, which is uh, it's a nonprofit that just charges its members what its costs are and keeps them in reserve to take care of accidents. It, it's, as, it's enough of a service and enough of an economic benefit to the region that it should be run more efficiently than just letting Spectrum or Consolidated come in and just say, it, if you want a 100 uh, gig signal, it's going to cost you 150 bucks a month. You know, it, it has to have some rea reality as far as what their cost to put it in. And none of them have offered to put the system in. They all want to borrow money through us at our bond rating and then take advantage of the system once it's done. So we've spent a lot of time at the long and the short of it is they're trying to put together the petition so it reads correctly so that it can go to the electric co-ops. Because I mean, the, the hardest part of getting these systems in is getting the stuff up on the pole. Is pole rental or pole space. And there's a lot of resistance, and it's resistance based upon whatever agreements are being made between the cable companies, the telephone companies, and the electric companies. And we're trying to maybe break that cycle a bit. So that agreement, which I guess we're on top of somehow. Um, anything else on um, Selectman's updates? OK. We had, um, what was the other thing I had to do, Karen? Um, the more it would be a discussion at some oh, point. Okay. <coughs> do we, um, is there any paperwork on it? Where is it? Is it in here? There's an email from Tim Lee in there, and then Rick's advice is in So, oh. so the, con the consultant made his site visit <coughs> to both of the locations, right? right. <coughs> I think is prepared to come back and talk to us about that, including projected coverage maps based on those locations. Is yeah, he didn't right? say, but I'm sure he would. He proposed two warrant articles to have you folks add into the warrant. Um, I just really resistant to changing writing. Warrant. Um, in that vanilla one is okay. the original email and then Rick's advice. Offered two warrant or two revised warrant articles, like some revised language to those two, or one warrant article that would encompass both and be easier. <coughs> so this, I mean, they're asking us to redo do our warrant to include. Uh, Authorizing the selectment to lease town and property located at 69 Sodom Road and 189 Middle Road. Those are, so they want two warrant articles um, for the purpose of annual rental market value, market rental as good or some adjustments. At any rate, it's to put, put cell towers up. And I, I mean, is there expectation? I haven't talked to him since he was in here. Is is his expectation that we're going to do something this year? That's what he. That's what he's asking. Yes, and today's literally the last the last day to post a warrant legally with the budget. Um, as you know, we've posted a warrant already. Um, 
and have gone through the And this process. doesn't have to, I mean, let's presume for a moment that we go the direction of posting two new warrant articles. Does that have to go through the budget committee as well? No, because there's no appropriation. Yeah, and, and it doesn't have to go to the ERA, right, right. which we we've already uh, been through. So, um, but our, I, I share your concern about adding to the warrant on the last day. Yeah. Um, we do have the opportunity to do it. Uh, if the project is viable and can move forward and we need this authority to do it, and we don't do it this year, then it's not going to happen for over a year. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, unless I misunderstand this. So that's, um, I, I know that both Chief Shigori and Chief Thompson have, uh, are interested in additional cell coverage because of the ongoing concerns and, and problems they have with coverage in town and also the towers will be usable for radio repeaters uh, so not only will it help with their, with their cell phone coverage and everybody else's but it will help with the, with the radios so you know it's, I think it makes sense to move forward and, toward negotiating uh, to have the installations done um, if it doesn't go to town meeting this year, then it's not going to happen for a year, at least. So is the town report printed, Karen? I've spoken to them. It's on hold today. We can okay. tell them today. Because that's my biggest concern, is that we throw something into the town report, or we throw a warrant article out to the warrant, that hasn't been properly vetted by the public, and then all of a sudden, you know, the Mavens of the world get up at that town meeting and say the whole war is invalid because we did this. So I want to make sure that we don't put the war at risk just to make AT and T happy. Um, or Verizon, whatever it is. Yeah. So yeah. So you go. Um, and I, I guess I'm. Um, well, I would suggest I'm not going to put a war. If I could just finish. Yep. I'm not going to put a war in. in I'm sorry. No, I didn't mean that's, that's fine. Time. No. That's going to specifically spell out a partnership agreement with Verizon Wireless. That's not going to happen. Or anybody. We're not going to do a, a war article that specifies it. We can release to them and them only. If we want to put a war article in there that says uh, authorize the selectmen to lease property for uh, cell tower construction and collecting rents, I'm, I'm cool with that. But I'm not. I, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Right? I mean, Sorry. we if we restrict our ability too much with the uh, uh, with the ability to to lease right. cell site locations, <coughs> then uh, it makes our negotiating position with whoever might want to put a tower up. Right. Uh, Right. I mean, our ultimate okay. goal, I hope, is to get comprehensive self coverage in Tuftonboro. Right. It isn't just a line the pockets of whoever wants to build a cell tower. It might work for them, but does it work for us? Is can we negotiate those two sites into having one other site that might comprehensively finish covering all of Tuftonboro, which would be a great thing. We already had a cell phone test right. period, didn't we? Yeah. And that information's proprietary. We can't get it. Right. Uh, I'm ready to table this issue. And, and one of the things is, before I do business with Verizon or anybody else, I f go and talk to the town that's doing business with them, and I ask the question, would you hire them again? I do this with people that we hire. I do this with bids that go out. So I'm prepared to table the discussion on this. All right, before you do that, yep. before you make that motion, yes. I'm going to make a motion that we create a war article that reads, to see if the town will vote pursuant to RSA 41, 11 a 
to authorize support of selectmen to lease town-owned property <coughs> for longer than one year to further uh, and further to authorize the construction and installation of a new personal wireless service facility, PWSF, on the property, subject to obtaining all necessary approvals and subject to such other business terms determined by the Board of Selectmen to be in the best interest of the town. How's that sound? Yeah. Should, I, should I include 69 Sodom Road and 189 Middle Road in that description? Um, or other locations? What, I, I, I like your idea of being more generic with it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he, he offered two specific articles. My idea, if we we're going to do that, is you'd combine them into one article. Right. Okay. But so you could take the, the single article and modify it so that it doesn't specify the two locations, but that we, it, it gives us the authority to negotiate the placement of cell towers on town owned town property. Owned. And there may be, you know, maybe they want to put one up the transfer station. It, maybe that's a good location. Or a circle farm. But, well, the town owned, owned property. You know, they've talked about Town that. owned property. Yeah, they've also talked about putting one up with, off of Phineas Graves Road where the town owns a building. And have to yeah. turn the down. What do you got there, so, kid? Well, perhaps maybe, I don't know what you said, is maybe this could be cross out. But I crossed out, left that in, and so on. All right, I'll read this one. To see if the town will vote pursuant to RSA 4111A to authorize the Board of Selectmen to lease town owned property and to further authorize the construction and installation of new PWSF. On town owned property, subject to obtaining all necessary approvals and subject to such other business terms determined by the Board of Selectmen to be in the best interest of the town. Kind of the same thing. Yeah, you, that's what you said. Yeah, and I just they had that. Mm -hmm. How about that last part? For longer than one year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that has to be yeah. in there. I think that's. Yeah, that's, in this time, I think you just said. I just, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to include any uh, public hearing notice in the event? <laughs> well, I mean, I know what. In, in, in my view, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it in public session. We're gonna do it with right. public input. This, this is not gonna be a. We're gonna go into a room and do it. Uh, uh, and furthermore, you know, uh, in my opinion, we talked with the our utilities uh, attorney that we have to get some. Right. You know, well, yeah, what, what, what's the usual customary <laughs> leases for these things? Right. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I just see not this board and probably not the last board, but some boards in the past with the cell tower up here. And I'm not interested in that. Right. I mean, just from an aesthetic right. standpoint. But, right. Um, all right. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we approve that addition to the warrant that I just read. I will second it. Are those are you with us yet? No. Or should we no. have a no. I want the issue tabled. I think that this is, this is wet ink. I personally mentioned to Mr. Yee twice in public session mm -hmm. that it need to be in a timely fashion so it could be vetted and all questions and right. and whatnot. I think we have enough issues at town meeting to be involved in without this negatively affecting town meeting. The other thing is if this is so important mm -hmm. and so wonderful, we can always have a special town meeting uh, on well, down the road. Yeah, I'm not a real fan of I, well, I, I, I'm not either. I, I, I would just offer this comment. Yeah. This article is not approving the installation of towers. All it's doing is authoring, authorizing this board to Andrew move forward Jones. To a conclusion. So all of the things that you're interested in, in getting additional information on are certainly things that we would want to do before we uh, we execute an agreement with uh, Verizon or anybody else. Uh, it's our it's our opportunity this year to be able to move this thing forward. 
sometime between now and the next town meeting. We so this is a lapse in authorization? No, no, no I don't think it is. Oh, it lapses when they vote again? Well, I, I don't interpret it as being lapsing. All I'm saying is that if, if we need the authorization to, to execute a multi-year lease for this, and we don't go for it this year, then we can't do a lease until after the next town meeting. Right. I mean, I appreciate Lloyd's perspective. And I think it's, I, I, I think this is gonna work that way. We don't ever have to do anything. We don't ever have to sign anything. But we can't sign anything without the authorization to do it. So let's just presume for a moment that we get this signed and we put it out on the street, okay? We now have the authority to approve cell phone towers. Maybe two or three other carriers come in, or I don't know how many there are, I don't have a cell phone. But now we're in a position of negotiating what kind of coverage we get. And I think we can, at some point, have a little longer discussion about what our goals are. You know, it's, I, we know what their goal is, but what's our goal? I think our goal has to be getting more comprehensive cell phone coverage for our citizens. And if we, or, or not have that goal. I mean, I guess that's the question I'm gonna to put to, to Lloyd. I'm willing to state the following. Okay. I'm willing to change my mind and agree with you too. And in the record, I want it stated. My primary concern is we have fire and police and EMS officials that can't talk to dispatch, can't talk to anybody in town. And for that reason, I'm ready to change my mind, Mr. Chairman. Well, I appreciate that. And I think that also enters into the discussion about how we do go forward. Yes. I mean, it's not just the three of us. Correct. All right. I'm going to, all those in favor of my motion and my vote, and seconded by Selectman like Markson. Aye. 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 Nice job, guys. Thank All you. Right. Can I can print a new one for you. Yeah, we got to sign it today. Yeah. Today's the day. Yeah, we have any other. Uh, okay. Correspondence. Green correspondence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice job. Thank you. Okay, the surveys are in for uh, Carroll County Broadband. And also um, some instructions for that were given to a survey that was done in Wyndham. Okay, we we have opened the post closure bids. Hopefully that's gonna happen. And uh, I, I'm assuming that the chief of police got this memo from Judge King about, um, and, and Jack should get a copy as well. So it's a moving certain claims into the electronic system as opposed to being physically written on paper. Yeah, that was part of his effort with the new computers. Right. I like Dave King, but I don't like his boss. Um, we've got the revised 19 Mile Bay Habitat Survey. Final report. Yes. For everyone to read. We have the estimated cost for the police facility. And we'll go forward with that. That's all about the police. We need to work on a handout, and I think we should probably do that or some sort of presentation on the police department. So let's. The facility, yeah. Yeah, yeah what kind of, do you have an idea of what you want on the handout so they can start working on it? Well, let's individually put something down on paper sure. and yeah. okay. hand it out on yeah. Friday. Yeah. 
um, is it attention to residents with that's items? from the conservation commission uh, see the see the half thing there that's going to be put in the newspaper the top sheet there okay. so we have well water testing kits right. available pick up March 2 through 6 collections March 8. <coughs> And this is an explanation of how to do that. It'll be in the paper. A long term management plan for milfoil and Phragmites. So that's the annual update from the state okay. Department of Environmental Services. Uh, it's a 10 year plan uh, with uh, addressing historical areas where we have it and how we treat it and also other approaches going forward. It's it's an update on the boilerplate, if you will. Mm -hmm. We've got a proposed schedule of job performance reviews. This will be in non-public for Jack and Diane. Weren't they a couple in a song? Yes, yes, they were. They yeah. were, were John Cook and Alan Camp. Yeah. Yeah. Karen and Andy Wright. You sure is. He's showing your age. Yeah. yeah he's showing us. He's, he's from flyover country. Right? Yes. So yeah. do you agree with that schedule or just plan for this Friday for now? Or? Yeah, 228, which is this Friday. Okay. Yeah. Right. Nine o'clock. Yeah. Sure. That's fine. And you talked to us about Jeff Hayes looking at the USDA force yes. yeah. the police facility. Um, the Health Trust public hearing notice. Yeah, would anybody like to go to that? No. <laughs> yeah. All right. I can nap at home. Yeah. I'm sure they'll send us a uh, report. All right. And, and the uh, uh, Selectman Markison's already invited us to the Board of Selectmen and Zoning Board of Adjustment Workshop on March 5th at 7.30 at the townhouse to discuss Airbnb short-term rentals. So you'll all be going to that? I'm, out of, town. I'm out of town. He's out of town, but I'm just trying to make it. Yeah. I have another appointment. Okay. I just want to make sure if I should vote or not. But, but you want to go? I'm okay. going to uh, I mean, post it. watch it on uh, YouTube. Okay. I just want to see if I should post it. Thank you. <coughs> So this is from uh, Selectman Wood. We've recently had five employees miss work due to the flu. Two went to the emergency room for treatment. One was hospitalized. I would ask the question, should we have a qualified company clean the following areas? Police station and town offices, transfer station office. I would also ask if the townhouse should be cleaned since it will be used again as election uh, and office site. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The one case I knew about is interacting with the public constancy. I don't, I don't know how we're going to solve that. There's been a second individual that's been in the hospital. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's, that's I have to choose my words carefully yeah. because of HIPAA. But it's a uh, three. Is it public three. interface that's the problem, or is it the work environment? Or do, I'm not exactly yeah. sure because I'm not an expert on healthcare. It's just yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if if there's a company that can come in and and uh, these are my words: scrub the air and clean the the uh, rumps. Um, All right. Well, let's have Jack and Karen look into it. And see if okay. Right. I did ask Jack, and you know, as a health officer, and he talked about what he knows there. So. Uh, okay. Like that, I'm. I'm just concerned, especially when we have elections coming up at the uh, uh, up there. Uh, how many people are of older? <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah, would that qualify for voter suppression? If we uh, had a get the flu. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other business? Got this printer ready? Yep. Really? <clears throat> One of the perks of me when I pull up my documents over here. Do we have some things we need to go over that's in the legal file, Mr. Chairman? 
If we do, we're going to have to go into non public. Yeah, that's where I was headed. Okay, so the Warren article that we were discussing earlier comes yes. out reading to see if the town, this is Article 22, to see if the town will vote pursuant to RSA 41 11 A to authorize the Board of Selectmen to lease town and property for longer than one year and to further authorize the construction and installation of a new PWSF. Should we actually put the right word, the personal yeah, virus? Yeah, let me yeah. check. That doesn't sound okay. right. Yeah, because that acronyms aren't going to work. Right. On town property, subject to obtaining all necessary approvals and subject to such other business terms determined by the Board of Selectmen to be in the best interest of the town, including but not limited to an annual rental of market rate value with market rental escalators and adjustments and subject to the taxation authority of the town for non-governmental use of gov governmental land and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any action necessary to carry out this vote. So one question that I had on the way that reads, we were talking about more than one, right? But the wording there says okay. a new mm -hmm. PWSF. So okay. we're currently we're currently looking at so two. So get rid of the A. Right. Yeah. Okay. So and, and, and make it and make it plural. Right. New towers. P facilities, right? Yeah. New and I'm sure the reason they put the word facility in is because a tower generally includes a little building next to it with fence yeah. equipment in it and all that kind of stuff. So. Okay. Um, I don't see that there's been any other changes to this. You didn't slip anything else in there, did you? I put in a huge pay raise, but oh, it's in the fine print somewhere. Yeah. You'll yeah. never find it. It's on the micro dot. <coughs> yeah. Period. It's on the watermark in the background. I'm still making mortgage payments on my condo and bonds. <laughs> Karen? Yes. Could I ask you that uh, when this goes to the newspaper, you do a little blurb explaining what it's about. So when she puts it in the paper. Well, we're going we're gonna to sell it at town meeting, too. Yeah. So I can only send her this update. Yeah. Okay, well, so check me. I didn't because look at it. Because people do right read there. the paper. And the way it's been done that the, in the last couple of issues, people like what they were able to read and explain to them and answer their questions. Okay, the new wording, Article 22, to see if the town will vote pursuant to RSA 4111-A to authorize the Board of Selectmen to lease town-owned property for longer than one year and to further authorize the construction and installation of new personal wireless service facilities <coughs> on town-owned property subject to obtaining all necessary approvals and subject to such other business terms determined by the Board of Selectmen to be in the best interest of the town, including but not limiting to an annual rental of market value with market rental escalators and adjustments and subject to the taxation authority of the town for non-governmental use of governmental land and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any action necessary to carry out this vote. So now we have a warrant and we're not changing it ever again. <laughs> Last day. <coughs> and then that's your motion, and he seconded it, right? I'm moving mm -hmm. the whole warrant. Yeah, and I'll second it. Okay, all so those in favor? Aye. 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 Nice job. Jeez. Jeez, Louise. This is something else. Um, I didn't see anything we needed to to review in the uh, public, but maybe I didn't read it carefully. Um, I didn't see anything new in there either. I think I took it all out and put it right here. But if you'd like to talk about the status of anything, 
Well, uh, everything makes sense to me. I just wanted to make sure we didn't omit anything. Okay, is there any other public comment? Don't forget your appointment tomorrow night. What time? 7 o'clock, I believe. Town, town Hall? On the hill, yep. Really? Right. We're in your campaign sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, seeing nothing else, I'm going to motion that we adjourn. You're going to go into 91A, is that correct? We are not. You are not. Thank you. Right. We're just being done. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you.